Hi, everybody. Thank you coming, for coming tonight. Uh, we have a special uh, teacher tonight, and she has taught before, so you can always gather either of the recordings on the on Splash a Wild Lifestyle group, or if you house these calls in your group as well. But we have um, Leanne, uh, she's going to be discussing about being a prosperous leader and what that means and how to understand how you can do that for yourself and then obviously help your team as well. So we're a little uh, running behind right now because we went over. So I just want to make sure you get all the time you need. So go ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. I am so excited to be here. My name is Leanne Anderson. I am currently in Hawaii. And I just came back from spending uh, about five days on a service trip at the Young Living Academy in Chongon, Ecuador. So my presentation today will lead into that. And the theme is prospering as a leader, partake, participating in the wheel of abundance. So we're going to talk, be talking a lot about high level concepts and I welcome your questions so I can dive deeper into anything that doesn't quite uh, make sense for you. And so my first step is to give definitions to what I'm talking about. What does it mean to be a leader? And a leader is not necessarily one who is leading thousands of people or even 10, 15 people. A leader is one who lives empowered. And so each and every one of us have the ability to lead our own lives. And in fact, that is the only thing we are in control of is to lead our own lives uh, with clarity. And this inner clarity is gained through our inner work, uh, which involves examining our thoughts, releasing our emotions, and um, doing the work. And that, that means um, actually going out and doing the things even though we we have fear, even though we may doubt ourselves, and even though we may fail. So uh, this gives rise, right, to what I call creative and inspired action. And without judgment, without thinking that if I did something and it didn't work, then it must not have been correct guidance. It must not have been creative and inspired action. I think I want to give you some um, bird's eye view of everything that happens in our lives takes us to where we are today. And it's necessary for our continual growth. So that is my definition of a leader. And the next obvious question is, what is the definition of prosperity? Well, we have two words, prosperity and wealth. And wealth can be seen as an accumulation of um, riches and even material things. And I would like to propose that living in prosperity is actually what gives us more joy. How many times have you heard someone say, well, I've made all the money in the world and I'm still not happy. And so I define prosperity with um, guidance and teachings from different teachers, uh, especially the Gene Keys, which I'm very much um, into. Uh, the contemplative uh, aspect of it. And I'm actually a Gene Keys guide. So prosperity is about flow of energy. And so as we participate in this idea of abundance, the wheel of abundance, we are giving rise to the flow of energy in our own lives, in within our family, within our relationships, within our community, and ultimately within you know, our sphere of influence. So what this means to me is that as we learn to give, we must also learn to receive. And as we come from a place of wanting to serve others, we ultimately need to come back into serving ourselves. 
And so that is a difficult lesson to learn for many of us who are um, wanting to do good and for others. And the truth is we cannot serve from an empty um, vessel. We have to take care of ourselves first. And so one of my teachers, uh, his phrase sticks in my mind always, and it is be generous with yourself. And if you think about it, it's such a simple statement and yet so profound because when we learn to be generous uh, with ourselves, we are also forcing ourselves to learn how to receive. And so that is the ultimate lesson for many of us. And also to get to that place of empowerment where we are worthy to receive. And so the work is really to get us to that place of being an inner queen or inner king where we are born into royalty and we are receiving and giving from a place of infinite spaciousness. So the other point I want to make here is that abundance is the state of being when one lives in the flow of prosperity. So abundance is almost uh, an emotion, a state of being where it's not doing, it's not accumulating, it's not grabbing or grasping or needing or wanting. It is a state of being that is learning to receive and to give. I hope that makes sense. And we have our oils to help us with all of these. And of course, um, so many of them can be used in different ways, but the three I picked out today, just to, to um, maybe ask you to do it later, is abundance, gratitude, and acceptance. And um, just allowing the abundance to be when we sit still enough to receive inner guidance from a place of gratitude and acceptance for wherever we are currently in our journey in our life. So moving on, I'm going to talk about what I believe or what, what guides me in um, leadership and the three foundations. And to me, it's very much about thriving on purpose. And the purpose is to thrive. <laughs> in other words, there are many um, sort of ways we can get stuck in wanting to find out our purpose in life when truly it is almost always right in front of you. And if we have the clarity of our thoughts, um, we would allow ourselves to be led one step at a time, one breath at a time, and not worry too much about what the overall picture is, but to really understand that the ultimate um, goal or dream is um, planted in us because we have that seed within us, like an acorn seed has all it needs to grow to become a tree. And we receive visions and dreams because we're meant to get to that place of inspired action. Okay, so the three foundations, truth, love, and energy. And this is based on a lot of um, ancient wisdom from many indigenous cultures can be distilled down to um, the Trinity. So truth is when we have clarity with our thoughts. And so, as I mentioned earlier, examining our thoughts, what thoughts are keeping us in our limiting beliefs? What thoughts are programmed within us from our past to imprison us in our current state of poverty consciousness? Um, what thoughts are actually um, pushing us away from stepping into leadership, first in leading ourselves with so much confidence and assurance that ultimately 
we have people that we are leading, but side by side. Moving on to love. So we can we can almost see this as um, truth coming from our um, energy center in our third eye or crown. Love coming from our heart energy center. And this is about feeling our emotions. And so as humans in this um, modern life, a lot of us are stuck in the negative emotions, what we term as negative, but maybe the less um, productive, less life enhancing, and lead us towards uh, paths that are more destructive. But truly, emotions are the language of our soul. And what that means is that as our heart speaks to us, our emotions are actually guiding us towards what is um, indeed our purpose, our, our destiny, our um, path that is going to allow us to thrive. And so again, uh, all of this, right, our essential oils, it's really amazing how this work that we have maybe stumbled upon in this lifetime or very purposefully chosen, this work is supported in all ways by our plant spirit friends, by our plant beings, um, the consciousness of the plants that go within us and help us to release our emotions, to give us clarity in our thoughts, and ultimately to give us the energy to create with inspired action purposefully. Okay, so these three foundations of truth, love, and energy. And I call it a wheel because all energy spirals. And you can see it in the tiniest of buds of flowers of any nature being that is growing to the cosmos, to the nebulae, to the star clusters, to the galaxies. Spiraling is the natural growth path of consciousness, if you will. But what happens is it spirals through pauses. Pauses are rest. So in all of what I'm saying is that we spiral through cycles of action and rest. And that is going to allow us to have this ability to wield the energy given to us when we are sort of responsible enough to step into this um, self-leadership. And just to give it this cap, ultimately, it's almost as if we're being breathed, right? We're being um, lived. It's, it's this selflessness. It's no longer about our own wealth or prosperity or abundance. However, it comes in such um, beautiful flow. And we are in the state of receiving while giving and giving while receiving. So I'm just going to pause here and see if there are any questions. Thriving on purpose, yes. Okay. All right, so feel free to type in the questions whenever you um, have any. Now, here in Young Living, we have a very special gift of having the mentorship of what I believe to be a man that was truly living all of these concepts I was just talking about. And I'm just going to take quotes from different writings and different areas um, and show you by example how um, truly blessed we are to have this guidance from Gary Young. <laughs> you guessed it. 
Okay, so um, thoughts. That was the first foundation of leadership. And I'm just going to read this aloud and, you know, maybe skip a little, uh, but just to give you a flair. So Gary was um, amazing with coming into it by using his thoughts. And he says, people often say to me, Gary, I don't know how you do it. So here is one of my secrets of how I do it. I don't waste my time sleeping. I engage my time in creative dreaming. Then when I get up in the morning, I have many answers. So I put those on my notepad. Then I start daydreaming about what I dreamed about the night before. So uh, we have heard about how Gary uses uh, dream capture, for instance, and he always has a notepad by his bedside. And all that he has dreamed about has almost always come to him either in his nighttime dreaming or in his um, solitude in the mountains. Uh, we all know that um, pausing and allowing clarity in his thoughts was what guided Gary Young through. And so he goes on to say, I mean, this is all different areas where he has written. It's not necessarily the same document. So he says, that's why it's important every day when you say your prayers, never say, Father, bless me that I can get rid of this stuff, because he may do that very thing and you may not get what you really need out of life. What you do is you always give thanks for every single day, for everything in your life. And Father will work with you as he sees fit and as he feels you can reach your fullest potential. And so that's why I um, brought up gratitude, because abundance is also about living in the state of gratitude, in recognizing the blessings you have in your life. Because once you do that, you start to call more of that in. And Gary knew it, right? Um, he, that's what he's exactly saying here. So then he goes, when I was building these farms, many times I would walk into the woods behind a ranch and I would get down on my knees and I would stay there until I could believe it. I would give thanks for that distillery already being built when I didn't know where I was going to get another $5 to build another square foot of metal. When I didn't know where there was going to be another $10 to put another plant in the ground, I would go out in the trees and I would pray and I would thank him for the metal, for the plants, for the help, whatever I needed. And the next day, the next two days, three days, whatever it was, it isn't up to me to put in a time frame, but it happened. And so he's going into a little more about coming out of poverty consciousness and into the state of prosperity. Um, of being grateful and asking and praying for the visions and dreams that have come through and believing that it already is here. And so he says that that's how you move out of fear. You move out of, move out of fear by knowing you already have it. You give thanks for your friends. And if somebody criticizes you, they're not a friend. And thank God they're gone. And this is what he's saying. So he's always pretty funny. Um, I see some chats. How do we get out of the needing and grasping? Exactly this. So he doesn't say, um, help me get rid of this stuff or give me these things. He says, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to have these things so I can move forward, right? Um, and so try first by having a gratitude journal and saying thanks for everything that's already in your life. And then having another um, section where you're giving thanks for the visions and the dreams um, that you know is in your future and giving thanks for those things. and trust you have to trust and so use your oils use believe <laughs> and so then we move on right to the next part which is your feelings right so this grasping this needing comes from the emotional body and gary says so use the oils daily to keep that release and keep the deprogramming going because the oils help in the reverse spin on the template transcription to where it will erase that information before it encodes it onto the memory RNA, the storage bank. Those are things 
um, maybe a little typo here. Those are very important. And the best way to accomplish it is to do a little bit every day. And so it is really um, amazing that all that we need is already written in our resources, in our history of this company and in our oils. The oils is still here with us, even when Gary isn't. Um, his writings is still with us. And it's important that we, uh, we look back and we reflect and see how it's relevant to us in this point in time. So then moving into inspired action. And of course, Gary is just really famous for this, right? So he goes, I'm going to come back to some of my own experiences. Some of you have been here at the farm. Some of you here have been three or four times and you have watched it evolve. If you don't have a personality like mine, because when somebody tells me you can't do it, just watch. And so we have seen the evolution of the farm in Ecuador of the Young Living Academy and here he's talking about the St. Mary's Farm in Idaho. And we have seen the farms come up in different countries. In Croatia, for instance, he was determined to build the distillery there for, for Helichrysum. And he devoted his time to it and got it done in record time, just as he did in the Northern Lights Black Spruce Farm. And so he always did it for us. He always did it because there were people out there needing the oils. Again, that is that selfless part of Gary that was always driving him. And um, with that, I'm going to shift gears here and sort of talk a little bit about this selfless part because it is the ultimate reason why we do what we do. And I did start by saying, be generous with yourself and you cannot be a leader if you don't first lead yourself. And so that is still a prerequisite. And so if we wanna jump right into being selfless, uh, beware the burnout, beware the um, frustrations if things don't turn out the way they have, uh, you have visualized in your mind because part of the acceptance is really about the timing and the lessons that we still need to learn. And that goes back into the emotional release. We have to cycle through this however many times it takes with no judgment, no blame, no guilt. And yet it's also a choice of completely and ultimately uh, forgiving and accepting what needs to happen. And in all of spiritual paradoxes, it's when we completely surrender and accept that then growth happens. And then we don't have to go through the muck anymore. Okay, so, um, so Gary was that ultimate uh, mentor for us, prospering as a leader. And this is what he says. Sometimes you may be the only one who believes in you. Oh, wait, sorry. I need to move this out of my screen. And for the most part of my life, that is the way it was. Then he's talking about Mary here. Then one day I met a lady who was so turned on to the oils that she got attracted to me. And now I have someone who, even when she doesn't understand me, even when she's not sure or clear of my vision, this is what she has said to me. Honey, I believe in you. I trust you, even though I don't understand. And I want to pause here and, and tell you a little story of what really touched me um, at a convention one year. And I'm going to really give a very brief version of the story because I don't remember who was on stage. Someone came up on stage and accepted an award. And a question was asked, how... Or, or she said it maybe, how did I get here? What is the number one thing that allowed me to come up here on stage to receive this award? And I cry every time I tell the story. <laughs> and she said, I'm up here because someone believed in me. And um, 
I absolutely love the the way that um, Young Living is structured because I believe it is um, the business that is conscious and that allows us to grow as human beings, even as we do the work that um, allows us to thrive. And the someone that believed in her was the person that enrolled her. And so I, as a leader of my team, absolutely um, believe in the potential of the people in my team that have the desire and have the vision and have the um, really, you know, the, I guess the vision and the dreams that propel them, that motivate them. And yes, I do get frustrated. I do get a little disappointed when some of them quit. And I had seen so much potential, but the few that went all the way and are there because someone believed in them, that is worth 10,000 of those that quit. You know, the one person that um, truly stepped into their potential as a leader, an empowered leader, um, is a beautiful sight to see. Okay, anyway. <laughs> So that is powerful and we go forward and it happens. That is how you can change the status of disease, how you can change the status of poverty consciousness, how you can change the status of status quo. You learn how to program the brain, but it must be done with the same intent in the heart and the mind together. So this, this idea of um, selflessness, this is a picture of Gary uh, as he was unveiling the plans for the Young Living Academy. And uh, many of you know this story, but I'll just uh, tell it briefly. As, young, as Gary was setting up the farm in Ecuador, uh, he kept passing by this building, derelict building on the main street. And he thought it was an abandoned building. One day he saw some children come out with backpacks. And so he was curious and he went in there and he literally saw between 40 and 50 children packed in a tiny area. And that was their school. So he was immediately motivated to build a school for them. And that's how uh, the Young Living Academy got launched. So this is... Uh, in the blog, Young, Gary Young's blog, and it says, once upon a time, there was a man who saw a need in others and rose to meet it. He encountered children in a country, not his own, who were getting a poultry education in a building barely fit for human habitation. So he did what needed to be done to buy land and get the supplies and teachers needed to ensure those Ecuadorian children got the empowering education they needed. Then he started a foundation so that the scope of his efforts would reach beyond himself and touch many more lives. And so I want to tell you a little bit about my service trip to the Young Living Academy in Ecuador. And as part of my um, thriving on purpose, living in prosperity, giving is a huge part of what I do. And so this is the first ever service trip for sponsors only. And so if you sponsor a child for $75 a month uh, with the Young Living Academy, um, you are actually contributing to the top world-class education for children of villagers who barely live in one-room houses where six, seven, eight people of the same family live in the same room. And yet they're getting this opportunity to receive an international baccalaureate uh, education that is project-based. And they also learn how to use the oils to help calm them down and to um, also get in touch with the flora and fauna and, and nature around them. And so the school is very much 
um, nature-based, a lot of outdoor time. And the parents are so grateful every time we visit. So this coincides with the expansion plans of the Young Living Academy. And I wanna tell you a little bit about that. And so um, here is Andrea Olag, and I'm just going to see if this works. I'm not sure how this is going to work. Um, but I do want to just uh, maybe show you what she is seeing there. So if you see where the green um, portion of the land, you are seeing the expansion of the Young Living Academy. For 10 years, they have been negotiating or wanting to purchase the cocoa farm that's right next to the Young Living Academy. And it finally has gone through. So it will more than triple, double the size of the land that they have now. You will see the bottom right of that, that is the current footprint of the academy. Hold on one sec. So um, Gary's vision has always been to also have a university education. And so now they're able to expand into that. The school currently has 300 plus students and they plan to expand that over time to a thousand students. And they're going to have um, a university as well as the cocoa farm right now is being turned into an organic farm. And they're going to keep a portion of it and they're going to have a chocolate factory on site where as we uh, visit them, we get to go to that chocolate factory and, um, you know, be a part of that as well. So it's all really exciting. Um, I didn't quite get my pictures together, but you can see that um, in the back of this, there is a dirt patch and there is a um, wooden structure. So this wooden structure is where the site of the former school uh, was. So that dirt patch was actually the, is now the courtyard of this building, but that was the size of the, the school. And the point being the community has shown so much appreciation to the Young Living Foundation that they donated this land just recently to the Young Living Foundation and it has now become um, a community center where the women, um, what is their name? They, there's a woman cooperative and they knit and they make handicrafts for Young Living Foundation, and you can purchase those uh, usually at convention when they have um, fundraisers. Uh, they make little pouches um, and soft toys, those kinds of things. So um, moving on, just showing you some of the work that we did in this uh, service trip. We built a wall and we also made bricks. So this is just me making a brick here. And we imported this machine from South Africa and we uh, they're just like stacking bricks where you don't have to use mortar. And so um, these are some of us that were there. We laid the the brick floor here, this is not the same bricks that we made, but this is gonna be the courtyard of the new music and art room on either side of this courtyard for the pre-kindergartners. And so this is the first project that is really an expansion of the school. And they intend to have a lot more of the service projects coming up after a brief pause in 2020 and 2021. And this is our group. So we built two 
these walls in the two, three days that we were there building. And we had about um, 12 of us Young Living members that showed up for this. And the rest are some of the high school kids that helped us and also a lot of the staff of the Young Living Academy. So um, this is the little girl that I sponsor at Young Living Academy. I actually have another uh, high schooler. He's a senior and he's graduating this um, January, this February. And so when I was there this time, I actually sponsored a, a girl. And so now I have two families that I sponsor and she is the sweetest. And so if you go onto Young Living's website and uh, sorry, younglivingfoundation.org slash sponsor, you will see um, the children there that are still needing sponsorship. And so each child requires four sponsors and you will see dots right next to the name. If they have zero filled in dots, that means they are without sponsors. And so I picked one without a sponsor, which is natural because she's still really young. She just joined the school. And so um, the, the really young ones sometimes don't have sponsors yet. So we really encourage um, our members to give back, whether it's just rounding up to a dollar um, to give or to sponsor a student, it makes such a difference in their lives. And when you visit, you see the stark sort of opportunity we're giving to them. Um, and it means, not that it means little to us, but that it's it's such a small amount for us and yet such a huge difference to them. And so... Yeah, that is my presentation today. And I really want to pause and see if anybody has questions I can answer. Yes, Giving Tuesday is tomorrow. And actually, um, there is some kind of a campaign going on where Young Living Foundation is picking randomly those that give tomorrow to uh, win certain gifts. One of them is a year long supply of Ningxia Red. If I'm not mistaken, um, there are probably about, I mean, more than $10,000 worth of gifts that they're giving out. So if you want to contribute tomorrow, it would be much appreciated. Even if you don't want to sponsor, not don't want to sponsor a child, but even if that's not currently in your capacity, you can pick the Young Living Academy expansion as a project you want to donate to. And it can be as, as big or as small as that as you can um, give today. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, there is so much more uh, depth we can go into, into any of those uh, first few slides I talked about. And that truly is one that, um, you know, you can be led or guided to, you can use your oils, um, but always reach out if you want to know more. Yeah. I, I have a quick question. Okay. Um, so you obviously understand the frequencies that we put out um, um, and how our actions can either <clears throat> contribute to abundance or take away from. What's your favorite oil to make sure that like, it's like when we're really pushing hard, sometimes it feels like that is a the worst thing we could do is because it's putting out that energy of like ah oh, the frenzy so what's your favorite to like keep the calmness and the intent of our hearts being recognized mm -hmm. does that make sense 
Yes, absolutely. Okay. And <laughs> of course, you know, we would always start with, it's very difficult to talk about a favorite oil, but I will tell you that uh, Dr. Carolyn Mine and I decided that the one oil that we would use at the beginning of every class was Sacred Mountain. In Sacred Mountain, if you look in um, the blue book, is related to our solar plexus. And there is a lot of um, distortion in our mass consciousness. And so when we, we get into that, that frenzy, it is tapping into the frequency of the mass consciousness. And so we use Sacred Mountain because the affirmation there is, I am conscious. And the, we are moving from mass consciousness into Christ consciousness. And it can be uh, source consciousness. It can be love consciousness. But truly that frequency of love that is within us that we can tap into every time. And so our subconscious or body soul works on repetition. And it is our mind that wants to control it. But when we react to something, it is our subconscious that's reacting. So repetition is the, um, really the way to shorten the time between reaction and response. And what I mean by that is we may have a, a thought or, or a command from inside to react in a certain way. And if we don't catch ourselves, it happens. But if we catch ourselves and that's shortening that time, then we can take a deep breath and really sort of tap into that, I know better, right? And I will respond in a way that is gracious, that is compassionate, that is kind, that is loving, that is truth um so yeah i guess my answer to that is sacred mountain thank you very much mm -hmm. and uh one of the stories about uh sacred mountain in well not one of the stories but the the creation story of that i think maybe someone can Correct me if I'm wrong, but it was because uh, Gary wanted a memory of when he was out in the mountains. And so the blend of these oils really allowed him to tap into that frequency of being amongst the trees in the forest. Okay, so... Stacy, were you going to say something? You know, I've been trying to find something on the, the foundation page and I'm not able to locate it. So I'm, I'm sort of like dazed and confused here, but they have, I just wanted to add one thing because it's so fantastic. Um, and I love the Young Living Foundation and all that, that uh, they do, but there's a, a program, I just cannot remember the name of it. If someone else knows, please mention it in here, where um, they have a whole safeguarding process for um, kids or teens on the internet. And I was, I was gonna put the link in here and I can't find it right now, but uh, maybe we can put it in Splash when I do find it. Um, but it's just a great program for um, all the safeguards and teaching. There's a whole class for parents and guardians to be aware of what happens when a kid gets access to the internet or a phone and what the potential dangers are and then how you can safeguard it. And they even have, as I said, like a training class for it. So it's like really awesome. It's just another way that, I mean, that to me, well, that's something that any of us can do anywhere. And um, I remember when my kids were younger, they just wanted to look up Spider-Man, you know, it's just like, and I'm like, well, let me go look it up first, you know? And they, there's people who actually um, figure out how kids would spell Spider-Man like the wrong way. And it takes them to things that most likely we would not want them to be seeing. Right. And so I just love that they're getting involved in the digital air as well with um, the digital arena, excuse me, and to help safeguard people um, 
because people can be lured away even with sex trafficking that way. It's just not, you know, pornography or other things like, you know, kids, people can get in danger and just accidentally on the internet. So uh, it was just something I was going to add to what you're doing. It's such beautiful work and what a great opportunity for um, someone who sponsors a child to be able to go to Ecuador and see the whole thing. And that I, I wish I would have been able to go on this last uh, month like you did as well. But this building the whole new school and being a part of it is such a blessing and making your own bricks and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure you got to do that, you know? So it's just like so much fun. So yes, thank you. Um, did anyone else have any? I, I do have one thing that I wanted to add about. You briefly spoke on the project work and I was honored to be able to be a guest with um, someone that was on the platinum retreat. And so I got to spend a day with the students and they were talking about how important the project work, work is. The students were saying that themselves. We, we met with some of the older ones and how it's really expanded their opportunities for broadening their thinking and how they're looking at their own communities now and with the new community center there that the women are getting to work in um, and do their classes and sell their goods and things like that but the kids were really really I think the most proud of their project work that they were doing um, and I, I just love that that is something that Gary had the insight to not just stick with traditional teachings there but to expand it into critical thinking and the skills that they would need to elevate them from what their normal education would be outside of the academy is very lacking. So these kids that are getting to go there, it's, it's phenomenal of how it's changing, not just their lives, but an entire community. It's very beautiful. It is. And just like Leanne was saying, it's just like you have, you know, almost two handfuls of people living in one room. And it's usually like cylinder blocks or like when you're leaving the farm, I know like the one main house on the left that's on stills, like the guard's house kind of thing. You know, like I just want to bring a door when I go back there. They literally have like bamboo walls. And if you go by at night, you can see totally through it. And it's just like, you know, they got to be eaten alive by mosquitoes. Yeah, you know I mean, it's just like, mm -hmm. I'm just going to net and put it over the whole house. It's just like, that the conditions and some of my friends there, they were talking about how they're always scared to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night because a lot of times there was a big snake in there and, you know, and just like, and then the, when the dad put on the pants that had um, with a scorpion in the pants, he got bit twice. I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't, I'm not a prima donna, but like, you know, bugs that just have a hard time, or, you know, things like that, right? But it's just, that's, a normal way of life for many people and of course here in America especially we don't uh, that wouldn't be acceptable and we wouldn't even think of I mean you just wouldn't even know if you were unless you were there and got to see the conditions and so the opportunity for these people to uh, take it, um, advantage of people who want to help them even though they don't may not know them and the generosity, once again, of the Youngs uh, and Gary's vision and even wanting to stop to see what that building was and why there's kids there. And, you know, most people just keep driving by. They wouldn't care. You know, they just keep going. And so it's such a beautiful opportunity. And then for all of us, if you haven't been yet, please uh, go to Ecuador. It's like one of my favorite places to go. And you get to uh, help and see and paint and do and gardens or whatever it is and just be a part of that. Okay, uh, Leanne, what else would, I, would you like to say anything else, hon? Uh, no, but you did remind me, uh, I didn't mention Nova Vita Medical Spa there. So that's mm -hmm. uh, definitely one way to give back to yourselves as you visit the farm and it's open to the public. And I got IVs of frankincense and thieves and raindrop and lymphatic massage and facials. It's just beautiful. You walk in and all you can smell are the oils. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure you would agree. Have you ever had a raindrop like they give there anywhere else? No, no. no. Yeah. It's, well, it's a whole different raindrop, isn't it? I mean, it's just like, I mean, people, they've just put the heart and soul into, they were trained by Gary and Tamara 
And I mean, they really, it's like, it's just amazing. <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. And Tamara was there as well. And Mary was there because of the platinum retreat. So it was a, it was a good time overall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I, we appreciate you so much. This is the second call that you've been able to do for Monday Night Unite. We really appreciate all of your uh, expertise and wisdom and knowledge and your heart for uh, Young Living and the foundation, especially, and uh, just uh, moving or uh, paying it forward with uh, what Young Living has to offer us. So we all thank you so much for your um, time tonight and your education. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank Bye -bye. you, Leanne. Thank you. <laughs> Have a great night, friends.